before we got to work. Okay, let's get started and then share the recording for anyone that's missed it. Yeah. Everyone, sorry, uh, a few minutes late. Uh, Carl? Can't see. Yeah. There you are. Hey, Carl. Hey, it's gone. I just need to step away for a quick second, but, you know, I'll be right back. <laughs> Okay, so um, David, do you want to start going over the document that you guys prepared? If we can just start the conversation on that, do you do you want to share a screen, maybe? Because sure. I haven't. Uh yeah, I, I can share that with you. That's just a draft document. Obviously, our board of trustees meeting is on Monday night. Um, it is. A I'm going to actually mute everyone for a real quick second. Um, it's a document that um, it's it's prepared. I'll share it with you. And it kind of outlines the outdoor seating. There's also another document um, that's kind of an intro letter just asking, can you guys see that? I muted everyone, so I can't hear you. Yes, we can. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yes. <laughs> um, so it just kind of outlines what we're looking for when it comes to outdoor seating. Um, we're just asking you to kind of put a map together if there's a tent, a lot of information on the tent because some of that needs to go to the building department and the fire department about egress information. Hours of operation, proposed lighting, um, and just some general rules that we, we're probably going to want to institute. Um, everything has to follow and all New York state guidelines. I know that there was about a 13 page document that came out uh, not too long ago. I didn't get through the whole thing, but it kind of outlines a lot of the outdoor seating and the indoor, you know, what you have to do with staff and things like that. Um, no outdoor entertainment. Um, if it's private property, uh, we're going to need consent, um, insurance liabilities and things like that. So that's just kind of an outline there. I spoke to a couple of people already that wanted to do this to start getting their thoughts together in regards to kind of just email me this information. Um, I'll go through this, um, share it with the board. We'll come up with a plan to get you guys started on this. If there's, I know that's kind of one of the big topics is the outdoor seating. If there's anything other else from other types of businesses, um, we have an introductory introductory letter that we're going to put out. Um, we're willing to hear all your ideas and try to assist you. So, um, David, just curious, how many businesses have reached out so far individually? Um, <laughs> so prior to last week, I've had one business talk about the outdoor seating and then another business did email um, us yesterday, late last night or today about some potentially doing some stuff in our parks, which we definitely have to talk about because they're closed right now and um, some things like that, so. Okay, so not too many. No. And it seems like, I mean, I've spoken to a few who just talked about their plans for uh, being, you know, providing safety rules and policies within the restaurant. So maybe skipping tables, putting up partitions, that they already sort of seem like people are thinking about it. I just wonder if there's anyone that is not really sure where to start that we should know about so that the village maybe and the, and the chamber could help at least point them in the right direction. We're not at their, that phase yet though. Can they, they can't have anybody inside no. for dining, can they? No, we're not at that phase, but we want to no. prepare for that phase. We don't want to wait until they tell us you're ready and then people have to figure it out. So we're trying to be very proactive so that they can start to plan and purchase what they need and make the, you know, make the necessary arrangements. So I've uploaded to the chamber website. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a template for the plan that they're supposed to be putting together prior to reopening that they can follow or just use as a guideline. So that's uploaded already. Onto yeah. And then there's also um, from the, I believe the restaurant association, I went on their site or, or some other site, I forget which one. Um, and there was a list of other guidelines for specifically for restaurants um, follow. So I've um, included those resources 
our website as well. Yeah, so you have a lot of resources for them on the Chamber website, really, you do. Now um, I, need to, I think we need to just work on communicating this to everyone and drive traffic to our website because there are, there are other resources. Um, the thing is, are people aware that they're there? Um, and do they know how to use these resources? Do, you know, do they need extra help? Like you just said, mm -hmm. it would be helpful to know so we can mm -hmm. provide um, assistance mm -hmm. or maybe just, you know, start thinking of putting together webinars or some right. kind of Zoom session that would help. So I know you shared a, web a webinar with the, the businesses the last time. Did people attend that? Was it well attended? I do not know because I, I get, get this information from the county, from Sherry, right. which you, I am sure you guys know. Um, and I'm pretty much just forwarding all the stuff that I receive from them. I'm posting things on social media and I'm posting things on our website. And I'm also sending out emails to our, our entire membership. But then from there, I don't really, you know, I, I don't get any responses or people reaching out or people asking for help so I don't know yeah I wonder if uh, we should put like a flyer together for the businesses that we could just physically drop off for those people who aren't either as part of the chamber or are not on on you know email I don't know that there are that many but maybe that would help I think that's a great idea um, I think that you know maybe if from a chamber standpoint and point maybe we've touched a lot of these um, these restaurants uh, bars op uh, operations in the past um, and maybe they didn't engage with us then but uh, obviously these are different times so I think that's a great idea if we just kind of I don't know, I will volunteer to all, be one of these people to do it yeah, uh, not, I'll volunteer you just, right there, you just walk right I, down and yeah. you slide under the door and maybe they come maybe they don't but chances are there they are a few a few of the businesses that are not part of the chamber when I just you know asked how they were feeling they were like oh I'd like to be a part of it so this seems like there's a little more interest because they realize that there's a gap for them. They don't, they're not getting information that they think they need. So maybe part of that flyer gives them that information. You can go to the, to the website. Here's the website. This is what, you know, and then that way they can see what the costs are and all that. They were asking me that those kind of questions. Are you talking about um, a flyer? I just want to make sure I understand correctly. Are you talking about a flyer that's communicating what's going on right now here or a flyer about the chamber? No, a flyer of what's going on here and then saying, if you're interested in joining the chamber, like one little thing at the bottom, here, go here and you can join and get more information. Okay, got it. It's sort of, sort of a dual purpose, not information on the chamber necessarily, but directing them to where they can get the information. Mm -hmm. Because just I, a couple I, points, yeah. yeah. Just a couple points, how the chamber can help you. Maybe two or three bullets. If you're interested in you know, becoming a member, I think that would probably maybe draw some people. Now they realize that they're sort of out there alone. Mm -hmm. yeah. David, this phase two reopening of the restaurants, is it only for outdoor seating? Uh, again, th that just came out very recently, but I, yeah. what I saw in that document is just outdoor seating. It just but, it did, outdoor seating. but it did start to talk about when, it, like some of the indoor seating, it seems. So I think it'll help restaurants prepare for when indoor seating is going to be allowed. Mm -hmm. Well, next week's supposed, uh, believe it, it's, ironically this morning I saw next week's weather forecast and it looks really good. So uh, good way to start. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people are going to be excited. Oh, you bet. Oh, uh, you bet. Has there been any discussion about like closing the roads for a temporary time? I, I know, um, I think Chris mentioned that uh, last time that they did that up in Connecticut. Is that kind of in consideration? Mm, something. All right, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, maybe I was thinking that something that we could talk about at our work session tomorrow. Right. You know, and years ago, um, we used to close down Main Street. Uh, actually, this is way before I was even on the board. It was some Camille, you probably could refresh my memory on this, where it was sort of like a gigantic joint effort of civic groups, 
the police department, the local businesses, and we shut down Main Street. We had rides, you know, everything that you can imagine on Main Street. Nice yes, they <laughs> called it Tuckahoe Day. They called it Tuckahoe Day, and they closed Main Street, and they had everything from Main Street down to the depot. Right, right. And we used to do that, or you guys used to do that in August. Um, I remember sitting out there, and it was very hot, so oh, yeah. it could have been August. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We needed an umbrella. It was bad. Yeah, I, don't, <laughs> I don't ever re remember it raining on those days. Never. But uh, I'm sorry. Can you just give clarification to what you're what you're suggesting? Um, would the street closures be permanent? In other words, um, no. The next yeah. two months, no. would there be certain sections where they could put tables out that would just stay there, or are you talking about a one day festival? Well, what I was mentioning was that I think Chris from the Tap House said in yes. Connecticut somewhere that they closed one road from like 4 p.m. or 5 p.m. until 8 p.m. or something. I don't know exactly the times, but uh, just for the, that block of time that some restaurants can then you know extend out to have a little increased occupancy with social distancing uh, for like the dinner time is what I'm imagining and then wrap right. it up and open it back up. Right. Yeah, David, I think uh, Tarrytown so, did that as well. Yeah, so Chris was definitely, he was talking about Rye a little bit. So if you know kind of the layout of Rye is they have Purchase Street there. All the restaurants are right on Purchase Street, basically. Right. So it's really easy for them to kind of put tables out and how their roads and parking lots are kind of coordinated. They just go right around. Yeah. If we're looking to close roads, it's going to be kind of almost a pretty much a nightmare. And I don't know how many restaurants it's really going to assist at that point. Right. And then also <clears throat> all the other ones that want to participate, but we're not closing down their roads. Exactly. That's mm -hmm. what we consider as well. What, what about giving consideration instead of closing the street? So uh, I'm thinking in terms of Main Street right now, that, that um, uh, Mexican restaurant that's right on Main Street. I'm sorry, I can't remember. Right off Right. Yeah. So let's just say... Right next door to him is um, something that would not typically be open during dinner hours. Would he be able to maybe put his tables in front of that storefront? It's, it, this would be in low, it, you know, to prevent street closures, maybe allowing the restaurants to expand, you know, further before outside of their storefront, if you understand what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not the expert on this, but correct me if I'm wrong. If we take up the whole sidewalk for um, for tables and chairs, then we need where the people are going to be walking by, keeping distance from those tables and chairs, as well as uh, you know, it's on oh, the, the two pager, but um, you know, emergency egress and uh, access for fire department, police department, etc. And wheelchairs, we have to. We yeah. Have to I, and I think in order to do the uh, the sidewalk, say in, in the case of Burrito, then we would have to eliminate street parking in that specific area uh, just to allow for people to walk by and maintain social distancing. That right. would be the only way around it. Yeah. Okay. I'm just trying to think out of the box. <laughs> oh, that's a good, that's a, hey, listen, that's what we all have to do right now. <laughs> I, but tucked away had the same problem. They have a very narrow sidewalk by tucked away. Mm -hmm. They would have the same issue at Burrito. That's so, right. I mean, as long as the business owner, I mean, for argument's sake, let's say this, this idea does make its way to approval, um, then, that, then obviously that restaurant owner will have to understand that his patrons will not be able to park in front of the restaurant and might have to walk or look elsewhere to find parking. That's... You know, it's just something that to point out to that to that particular proprietor if that's what they would like to do. And it might it might still be an uh, um, an appealing trade off. Oh, I I know that about it. I just want I just want the owner, you know, the, the proprietors to be aware of that. That's all. Right. They can walk I mean, up their dinner then. That's right, and also it justifies you having an extra piece of cake or, or, <laughs> or, what have you, or an extra appetizer. Right. 
<laughs> no. Always looking for a good excuse for that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that, you're absolutely right, Teresa. They, um, Mama Rasunta, I believe, has that right by uh, through their site plan approval, the outdoor sea. Well, that might be. Uh, or do they apply for a permit? Greg, Spice Village as well, right? Mm hmm I don't know specific, specifically um, if Spice Village has. Is that part of their site plan as well? Or we'd have to take a look at that, unless someone knows off the top of their head that they have that outdoor seating. No idea, but I think at this point, if it's in that courtyard area, that's up to the owner down there to provide their space for the for all their restaurants mm -hmm. down there. Yeah, and we and we have that owner right here on the on the on the Zoom with us. So right. Uh, I was also thinking about Romas and how they have that beautiful parking lot. And wouldn't it be nice if they just put all their tables and chairs out in the parking lot and then use I don't know maybe the the, the community center's parking lot for their patrons? But uh, you know, would we allow something like that? Yeah. That's what we're yeah. That's definitely what we're talking about with that kind of outline. If they want to do something like that, they just kind of bring it to us. How they're going to keep um, where they're going to kind of put their tables. How they're going to keep people out of the parking lot, you know, just so traffic doesn't drive in there. Um, absolutely, I think you know, if a business has their own parking lot, that is definitely something that we're interested in, or they should be interested in. I think we'd be very interested in helping them with that. So maybe in this flyer that we're talking about distributing, maybe we should indicate that they really need to step up and um, present their plan. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, at the way it stands right now, they they can hit the ground running next Tuesday. Next Tuesday is when they can start outdoor seating. So yeah, it's most imperative that we that uh, we get some of these ideas or plans, submissions from the, from the uh, proprietors here, the restaurants. Right, right. And, and Angelina spoke with you a little bit as well, man. Yeah, right. Angelina is, is, is pretty straightforward. Yeah. Uh, same thing, he's gonna utilize this parking lot. Mm -hmm. uh, he's gonna allow, uh, well, if, I think Lou's on the line or he's in the room, so I'd rather have Lou um, tell his side. Okay. Well, what I plan on doing is uh, putting up a tent uh, closest to the building, get about nine to 12 tables under that, and I might possibly add some more tables up on the top end of the parking lot next to the building uh, next to me uh, under umbrellas. That's, that's where I've gotten so far. Okay. And correct me if I'm wrong, um, this is going to be more of a case by case, right? Every, um, every owner proprietor is going to submit to you their plan. So, um, just so we're not you know, from a chamber or just people, um, you know, we're not speculating saying, oh, there's going to be a day where it's like sidewalk restaurant day. We not, don't wait for that. Submit your proposal to throw your seats on the sidewalk, get going first. Is it, what should we, I mean, is there, I'm sorry. Oh, actually, no, it's, it's the two pager that you sent. That's what they should be submitting in, right? Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Okay. And again, once that comes in, we're definitely going to have a conversation with them and, and talk it out and make sure that we all have a comfortability level um, with some of this stuff. Like again, the tap houses contacted me a few times and they've had a couple alternate ideas and there's definitely some safety issues that we need to discuss and kind of go through. But again, I'm here, the fire department will contact them, building department, police, we'll, we'll figure it out. Okay. All right, that's easy enough. Maybe if we're targeting uh, restaurants specifically, uh, maybe because some of them are not even in their space, like the tap house, for example. I, I don't know that that Chris has been in his space. Um, maybe we're better off just calling and saying, "Look, you know, this is what's happening." You know, maybe we we, we come up with a list of restaurants in the area and we just call each one if that's what we're targeting. Okay. I think um, Chris definitely knows what's going on. Yeah, and I think that goes back to the flyer where we talked about where yeah. if the businesses aren't on here, and most of them are, most of them you guys have reached out to, it's the flyers where, yes, no, no, guys we, are looking to do I'm, something. What I'm saying is in lieu of the flyer, it might be easier to just make a phone call. That's what I'm suggesting. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think 
you probably have to do multiple ways of reaching out to them. Yeah, definitely. We oh, need Mario, to you're muted. Everybody. I think the flyer is helpful because it gives people something that they can refer to. And it helps give guide, guidelines so that we don't have to keep repeating what people need to do. So I think both are good, though. Yeah. Making it's not that many businesses if we wanted to make phone calls. I think that's a really good idea. Because sometimes the flyers just go get in the garbage. Right. <laughs> they might not realize what it is. Yeah. Right. And, and also, yeah. yeah, too, because people are watching and they're seeing things and they will share. Um, I've seen that happen on Instagram a lot. So I think we definitely, once the flyer is created, the final approved communication, we should definitely, you know, be reaching out via social media platforms. One of the things we can do with uh, the flyer is, is that as this, as things open up, so next week, so say, you know, Lewis has got his thing going on at Angelina's, uh, like I can run out, take pictures at these different places and then on social, different social channels, uh, we can put the picture of the restaurant, but also include that flyer as well. So it's a post about Angelina's and a couple other restaurants, not with 20 million pictures, but separate posts and share it on the different groups like East Chester for the community, East Chester community, the moms and all that stuff can be on the chambers page and emanate from there, which I think would be, would be good. And then we can do what uh, Elmira says and what, uh, whatnot, but sharing it on those mom groups and those community groups will be very viral. They'll, show the he they'll, sh they'll share the heck out of it once they mm -hmm. see that these places are open. Even though you think they would know that it's phase two, everyone's crazy. So to be able to put it in their face will be beneficial with the flyer as well attached to that post as backup information. Lou, do you have uh, a time frame for when you'll be up and we'll have this plan put together or that you would be able to put everything in place? Well, I thought I had it until the 23rd, but uh, yeah. Omar came out with something today saying that yeah. we can go ahead with phase two. Right. Uh, but right. he didn't say if it's if it's the first day of phase two. So I, I but it looks like it's going to be one day towards the middle to the end of next week. So I'm yeah. going to work on it tomorrow and try and do everything I got to do. Yeah, phase two is going to start next Tuesday. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It's starting next Tuesday, but I was preparing for phase three. Yeah, I know. Well, 20 to hurt. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not, exactly. I'm not complaining about it. You know, I just, <laughs> yeah, I just gotta, I gotta start working on it tomorrow. I know, I um, know. I, 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 I spoke to a, a rental place, and you know, so I, I, I plan on being ready to go by Tuesday, Wednesday. All right. If you have a problem with the tent, I have somebody that I can refer to you. Okay. That I used to work with up at the county. Good. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. All right. So now, are you taking reservations? Like, how is this going to work? Well, it would be reservations, but I'll I'll try to have always have tables available for walk-ins. But reservations always help. Okay. Can I make mine now, Lou? Well, you want to make yours right now? You got it, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> and then the ser well, the servers will be wearing masks. Like, yeah. how are you planning yes. on doing? This? They'll be wearing masks. I read that in the guideline today. Yeah. Uh, the, the the patients have to wear a mask until they sit down at the table. Then they can take them off. Right. But it, and then, but basically, uh, it was very vague. There wasn't much else in there. So, uh, keep the table six feet apart. But there really mm -hmm. wasn't much else. No, so, no, I'm, no, assuming, I'm, yeah, I think. I'm, I'm assuming they were able to come inside and use the restrooms, but I'm not definite about that. Now, uh, in can. Connecticut, you can use the restroom, but when you walk in, when the patron walks in the restaurant, they have to put their mask on. Mm -hmm. That's right. in but, Connecticut. That makes sense that they should so. be that way here, too. Whenever they leave the table. They should put the mask on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like okay. I said, I'll try to get more information, but I just don't know who to, you know, who to get it from to get a concrete answer to all these issues. You know, Chris might know because he he has other um, restaurants and he's been opened in Connecticut, I believe. Okay. So he might be able to guide you on that. Okay, that's that's good. That's all I heard of. Yeah. Well, we have a we have a uh, conference call with the county tomorrow, so hopefully uh, we're going to get more information tomorrow. I'm sure that's going to be a hot topic tomorrow. Right. Well, yep. And I know he had stated that uh, the zones that were in uh, phase two already can start as early as tomorrow doing yeah. Yeah. outside seating. So that could be a guideline too as to what they're doing a little further up the line. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, this just changed like in the blink of an eye. 
Yes. Well, they were putting pressure on him to, uh, as of last week to, you know, to move to the stage because it's tough on a lot of people. Mm -hmm. it's real tough. And how about hair salons? They open also as well next week. Yes. Yes. Right? Well, I'm going to be the first one in line for that. If you can <laughs> look at me now. <laughs> I so we my... don't have anybody on here that has a hair salon. You made your appointment? <laughs> yeah, because they have certain guidelines to follow as well. That, that, I know those are by uh, appointment only. That has to be by appointment yeah. only. Then I take them walk-ins. You can't yeah. get your hair blue dry. Restaurants going to be by appointment only as well or no? will be walking just like before. Well, for restaurants, I mean... Reservation, I mean, not appointment, reservation. Uh, well, I, it, I'm going to take reservations and, and, and hopefully have, you know, some flexibility. But once I fill up, the, there's only going to be nine, table, nine to 12 tables out there. So I don't know how much flexibility I'll have for walking. That's right. Well, this was an idea that was published in the New York Times a few months ago, a few weeks ago. Some restaurants are using mannequins. Would you like to do that? Mannequins? <laughs> mannequins. It sounds like a joke, but it's true. That's what they did. They put some mannequins in the empty tables. The <laughs> it wouldn't look empty. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, I don't, I don't have that problem. <laughs> but, yeah, I hope not. <laughs> I don't think you will. I think oh, you know, um, Mayor and Diane will be customers <laughs> the, you know uh, more ser on a more <laughs> serious note there was a, a restaurant that is taking reservations over the phone and at the same time you order your meal uh -huh. then when you arrive at the restaurant your meal will be at the table or it'll be ready for you well, that's interesting. That, yeah that's that was mean. another thing but mm -hmm. to me that's a little stock i mean to me it sort of takes away what we're trying to achieve, I would think, by going out to a restaurant. And there's only going to be like two utensils on the table. You and not too much bread. Yeah, it's, yeah. I mean, and, and the, and the uh, server is only going to come over to the table one time during the course of your meal. So it, it was a little, but this is what one particular restaurant is doing in one of the articles that I had read last week. Hmm. And I'm not suggesting I think that's a good idea, you know, because you're going to have less traffic possibly because you don't have as much seating. So that yeah. sort of helps expedite, get people in. in and get them out, right. Yeah, you're not right. going to have the same dining experience that you would normally no. have. That's a no. good idea, actually. What if you write um, the menu on a, like a whiteboard and just your server brings it to each table? They don't touch the menu, but they can read off of it. Mm-hmm. We'll see. Well, or well, like car mines, they just post the menu on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was I was gonna definitely do printed menus uh, to hand out, and we could do something with specials on a board like that. Mm -hmm. I'll look, look into that. Printed menus, you have to throw printed, them out after uh, each. Ones that I can throw away, throw away menus. Yeah. So, uh, or you, or you could have a, or you could have pay, um, menus that you you fix you, that are affixed to the table so that they they're not touching them; they're just looking at them. Oh yeah, yeah. Underneath, Under, underneath. You know, like underneath, so that they don't, they're not touched. Yeah, yeah. it's a table decoration too. You kill two birds with one stone. You don't have to throw out. You know, you're wasting. Right. If you have a clear tablecloth, you have to have a clear tablecloth instead of a white tablecloth. Right. Well, yeah. Or everyone has phones these days. I mean, I don't know if you can do one of those barcodes that they scan it when they walk in, and boom, the menu pops right up on their phone. That's what yeah. they had in Connecticut, Carl. Oh, really? We had that in Connecticut. That's yep. the idea. I've never it set that up, up but right I'm assuming it's fairly easy. <laughs> so I keep wondering about a restaurant like Chow's that has an outside seating area, but you've got to go through the restaurant to get to it. As long as you have your mask. What? As long as you have your mask while you're walking through. You know, anytime you're walking through the natural, I would imagine what you're wearing your mask. Right. Sit down. You're amongst your folks, so probably get away with it. And and what about the bars? So um, can can the can the bars 
start to, uh, you know, entertain? Not, not indoors. But if they have an outdoor area in that guideline that talks about some outdoor areas that okay. you can be at if you have an outdoor bar. But I'm not sure if anyone does. I don't know. So if you're a bar, you cannot have tables. Let's say you're a bar that serves food. Can you have tables outside? Uh, again, I was just I just skimmed the guidelines real quick today, so I'm not I'm not sure. Okay. But the moral of the story is submit an app. That's it. Application. Well, again, if the, if you have your own outdoor space, I think that that's completely on you. We're talking about anything that Using we signs. can assist with. Dave question about um, a yoga student out to me today they on the call. Uh, I don't think there's anybody on the call from, uh, um, oh my God, I got their name. Yogi um, Life. Yogi Life. Yes. Yeah. Um, so they're asking if it would be possible to do yoga outdoors. I don't know exactly where. I don't know if they have a place in mind, a park. Right. So we did get that. The mayor and I got an email. I thought it was Yoga Haven. Maybe it was Yoga Life. Um, just the complications with that right now is that our parks are closed. Mm -hmm. um, so when they do open, we have to have a conversation. I have to have a conversation with the board is that if they do open, are we going to now be scheduling businesses to use our parks at certain times? Um, mm -hmm. When it comes to like the Bronx River Park, I mean, that's a perfect spot to bring tame people down and <laughs> conduct, a, conduct a class. Mm -hmm. But do you need a park to do that? I, I can tell you, if you bring 10 people down there and you guys are socially distanced and you're running a class, I am not sure who's going to bother you, to be quite honest with you. <laughs> okay. I was, uh, Karina, I was telling you, there's a, a lady before the virus she has a class that she starts in the park right by one of those benches as soon as we come into the park. And then what she does is the training session takes that group around the lake. Okay. I, I mean, I've seen people, yeah, doing mm -hmm. that. But a large group, let's say you have like 20 people. Is that like, mm -hmm. is that? She probably has, I would say, usually about 10 people, seven to 10 people in her group. And, you know, they have their little weights and they're doing all these various exercises as they walk around the park. And then when they get to a park bench, that's when they'll take a rest, maybe do another exercise, and then they continue on their way. Okay. So would it be okay if I suggest uh, this to them? I mean, it's nowhere near her place, but it works. Yeah, I, most definitely. Yeah, I would suggest that you keep the, the classes to 10 or less people. I mean, the, the New York State still has that restriction out right now. So it just looks better that way as well. And the parks are still closed. And the parks are still closed. Ours are, yes. Yeah, yeah, well, now this is really going to amp up that conversation, which we'll probably have at tomorrow's work session. Now that we get into this phase two earlier than expected. Mm -hmm. Well, no, we're not getting into phase two early, but some of the uh, mm -hmm. moving up. Connecticut increased their limit of a group of people that can uh, congregate from five to 25 as of June 1st. Mm -hmm. oh. oh, okay. Today's June 3rd. Where, sorry, where was that, Paul? In Connecticut. Connecticut? Oh. Right. But you still have to maintain six feet you know, distance um, with each other, but they allow up to 25 people to congregate. All right. So are we gonna get the flyer um, put together, David, or? I heard somebody else was volunteering that. <laughs> or Karina. <laughs> I can, I can volunteer uh my marketing skills are pretty good yes <laughs> yes i'm confident in saying that um and i think carl and loretta they volunteer to actually like either call or hand it out and you know, visit the businesses and, and um i guess distribute the flyer yeah. and if you need help i'm sure you know the board member will help also yeah i'll put yeah. it right 
no. Oh, nothing. I'll send it to everybody so we can all review it. Right. Out yeah, and then that we can. Uh, How are we getting copies made? I, I, I can't hear what you're saying, Karina. We're talking about the flyer. So once it's uh, finalized, approved by everyone, um, we can have it. We can design it for social media with different specs, right? Um, and then we design it uh, for printing. Well, mm -hmm. and we no, can, no, I, I understand that, but once it's designed for printing, who will make the copies? Who will actually print? Who's going to print it out? The, the, the flyer. Do, I mean, we don't have, the chamber doesn't have um, industrial printer, so we would have to, if we do it ourselves, we have to send it out print somewhere. To How many do you anticipate printing? I didn't hear the question. What was the how? How many? How many, many Third, forty copies. I mean, oh, how many? Funds. <laughs> well, again, I have to ask: Are we just talking about the restaurants? Or are we speaking about all of the businesses? Well, probably yeah, most of the other businesses are right? like opened, right? I think we're talking primarily restaurants and for the okay. most. Yeah, so then we're, what, we only need enough for the East Chester Tucko, really. So, not really East Chester either, because this is just village, um, Tuckahoe Village. East Chester is different. It's a different jurisdiction. Uh, jurisdiction. Oh, well, then if it's just Tuckaho, that's easy. Yeah. I don't think we're going to approve any East Chester plans, right? <laughs> <laughs> Of course, yeah. that's right. I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah, we can just go to, if it's whatever, if we can print it here or I can just go to Staples or something, you know, printing it. It's not a big deal. I can, you know, I can do it. Give it to me. I'll get it printed and I'll just, whatever it is, 30, 20, 30, I don't know, whatever it is. It's fine. Okay. And then this, you know, this will motivate East Chester and I don't know, Bronx is doing stuff, but this maybe will motivate East Chester as well because they've got to start getting on this too. Yeah. So it sounds like we have a plan. Yeah. 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 So David, what you got? You said this is a draft. Yeah, it's a draft. So what we're going to do is we're going to put something on the agenda for Monday night from the village board. What we'll do is we're going to waive some fees for the sidewalk cafe where I'm going to propose it to the board and I'm sure they'll do it. Um, and kind of put some language to allow the board to give myself and some of the other employees here some leeway into approving these things without having to go back to them. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll, it, it's a draft, but that's pretty much what it's going to be. Okay. All right. So then based on that, I'll just start designing the flyer. Yeah. Okay. And David, with that being said, can any of the restaurant owners that are on now this call, can we get that, that draft to them or at least give them something so they could start, you know, formalizing what they're going to do? Yep. I already have one person going to give me a call tomorrow. I'll go over it. Um, okay. And again, my office number, you guys can have that 813-9482. That can go out there. I'm, I'm happy to talk to any of the restaurants. Okay. You missed last words there, David. So, uh, it's it, the, the phone it's never stops anyway, so... <laughs> is Lois the only restaurant on this call? Mm. I don't see anyone else. We okay. I already gave him my number, so he's going to call me tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I hope Broken Boat uh, knows about what's happening with this with this new Phase 2 reopening business, so I'm sure she's heard about it one way or another. Sure they know. I will volunteer to walk over there for them. All right. <laughs> Is that a kill two birds with one stone walk? <laughs> it can be. <laughs> what about growlers? Have you heard from them? I don't even know. Is was is growlers even open prior to this? I know they were going through a change of ownership at one point, so I haven't been there in ages. I 
what about uh, Max, like Max Truck, the meatball guys that based in Tuckahoe? What, uh, David, like with tr with trucks, uh, for, I mean, they're a Tuckahoe business. A lot of these trucks aren't, but they are. So is it going to be anything special for that? Or like they could probably do what they were going to do with the Broken Bow? Uh, yeah, outside in their parking lot. Yeah, Broken Bow has a site plan to allow food trucks. So I would think that's exactly where they would go. Nice. Uh, they don't even have to come to the board with that. That's right. No. Yeah. Nope. Yeah, that's ready to go. So they don't even yeah, have to. That's all ready to go. go. Okay. She can yep. roll that out Tuesday. Okay. And what about the uh, parking lot um, for growlers? Would that be available at any point? Like if you wanted to do like Saturday and Sundays, like food truck day at any given point? you know, time frame within the day, would we able to do something like that and utilize the parking lot? So that's a loaded question. I don't speak for the board, but there's always been kind of a, a thought process is that that's promoting food trucks that may or may not be Tuckahoe businesses, right? Yeah, I think we should promote the, our businesses, our local restaurants. That's my opinion before we get outside food trucks in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Yep, I think Max is the only one that's local. Right? Yeah, right. So we yes, want to do with them, but yeah. Yeah. Well, what maybe, about uh, Chimeli? Chimeli's also a local guy. I mean, he's not a Tuckahoe guy, but I think he's in East Chester. Uh, okay. But I know Gina's. Uh, what is it? Gina's. Uh, what is it? Zeppeli. She's not from Tuckahoe. That's for sure. That truck that comes up here. Not my truck. You might want to well, make it. <laughs> <laughs> we need a Zeppeli truck from Tuckahoe, so let's get on yes. it. <laughs> get on it, Loretta. You might be fat free in air fry. Yeah, nobody <laughs> wants fat free anything. <laughs> want extra fat. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so does it make sense to try to put this flyer together and maybe start to raise awareness? I mean, starting Friday this Friday. weekend? Uh, Karina, could you have it done by Friday or is that too short? No. Fine, I'll work on it tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just not sure. I'm trying to think of the timeline on... Yeah. Because if it's early next week that they can start, obviously we want them to be educated on it prior to yeah. so that they can... Mm -hmm. uh, so a little bit of work this weekend and and Monday. Yeah, and the weekend's a great opportunity to go for a walk and yeah. knock on some doors. Yep, yeah. and eat. And drink. And drink. <laughs> All right, so it sounds like we have a plan. Rena, if, if you have them ready Friday, if you send it to me via email, I can get copies at my office. This way, Mike doesn't have to go pay for them. Okay. That'd be great. Carol. Thank you. Thank you. And then just let me you know how you want me to just Hey, who's that? Or or whatever, and I'd be happy to help you give them out as well. Cool. Thank Carol, you. you want to introduce yourself? I think they're asking, someone's asking who you are. I am Carol I'm sorry, hold on. So sorry. I'm on the board and um, I publish a local community in the villages, different areas in Westchester called the Town Planner. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice, nice to meet you. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> okay. Is there, if there's nothing Great. else? I think I'm good. We're good. I'll try to send something to you by the end of tomorrow. Okay. Perfect. That'd be that great. Friday, it's ready to go. If we need to make it. And just let me know how many I should print. Okay. Probably at least like 30, right? Yeah. Not, I don't think more than that. We're just doing tough to hold. Not more than that. Well, you know, the, then, deli, oh, the deli is different, right? We want restaurants. Yeah. And once, also once we post it on social media, you could all, uh, can, if you can share, 
within your social media pages. Um, I think that'll be helpful. Or maybe post it on the also on the village website or Facebook as well. Sure. And try to get as many people as we can. And on my town planner, I'll do that as well. Okay, perfect. Yeah, great. That's good. Thank you all. Thank right. you. Thank everybody. You. I look forward, to, look forward to seeing you guys. Yes. All right, sounds great. Looking forward to it. Yep, bye. same. Bye bye. Good night, everybody. Right. Good night. Take care now. Bye bye. Have a good night, everyone. Have a good night. Good night now.